What is up, good friends? You can see I'm here in a different location today because I wanted you guys to see my tiny, tiny bookshelves. In the background, you can sort of see I have, like, guinea pig stuff all over the place. That's because I live in a tiny, tiny room with two roommates just off screen here, my guinea pigs. So, <laughs> I am here today bringing you my um, October wrap-up, my TBR for Storthon, a... Mm, it's heavy. A book of the month unboxing and some info about NaNoWriMo. So I'm gonna start out with my October wrap-up. Now I read some chunkers in this month. I, I think I only got through seven books, but I read a lot of pages. Now the first book I read, I read at the very beginning of the month, I read The Sally House Haunting, A True Story. True story. We both know, we, or we all, I hope there's more than one person that's going to watch this video, we all know that I am an atheist. I have tried to make videos about my theory as to paranormal happenings and what's really going on, but it just looks terrible on camera. Long story short, I don't believe in demons, and this is about a house that they think is haunted by a demon, but I don't automatically dismiss paranormal claims. So this is like a memoir, I guess you could call it, but uh, Deborah Pickman, not really the greatest writer in the world, um, but her story was interesting. It's about a house that's being haunted by this little girl named Sally in Atchison, Kansas, and they start to think that maybe Sally is a demonic spirit masquerading as a little child, and it's really creepy. The stuff she describes doesn't mean that stuff really happened. I don't know because I think a lot of the stuff seemed to happen at night and there's sleep paralysis. Even I had uh, waking nightmares for a long time where I'd wake up like still in the middle of a dream and be hallucinating. So I don't know. But the stuff she described was very creepy, such as her husband getting scratched, their dogs going crazy. Um, when there was nothing there, things they were seeing, weird picture anomalies. It was really creepy. So I enjoyed that. Do I totally buy into it? No, but it was good for a little October scare. And then the next book I read was Elevation by Stephen King. And this is the only Stephen King book I've ever read. You can see right here I have it, but I haven't read it yet. And I know that is such a weird place to start with Stephen King, but it kind of borders the fence between low fantasy and magical realism. And it was short, and I was worried about meeting my reading goal, so I read it, and I loved it. I know that one is polarizing because it's weird. It's about a guy who's, like, losing weight, and he gets to the point where he's so light that he literally flies away. <laughs> And it's about these two lesbians, and they're not really accepted in their small town, and how he helps them, and I don't know. I really liked it. I gave it four out of five stars. Is it the best representation of King's work? I've heard not, but I really did enjoy it. So Stephen King, I am not a stranger to you anymore, sir, and I appreciate your voice and style. I very much liked it. Moving on. Because I'm a ninth grade teacher, <laughs> And I hadn't read this since I was in ninth grade. I read Romeo and Juliet. Now, this is not a love story. <laughs> we know, I mean, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this, you know the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Two households both alike in dignity and fair for where we lay our scene. From ancient guard by new newer civil blood makes civil hands unclean. For forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed covers take their lives, whose piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. And then there's a couple more lines that I can't remember. But that's basically what Romeo and Juliet is about. It is a three-day relationship between a 13-year-old and Romeo's age is actually never specified in the play, but I'm thinking he's about 17. And they end up killing each other and or killing themselves, and it's not a love story. However, it is a tragic comedy, and reading that as a grown-up versus as a 15-year-old 
There were so many lines in there that I didn't get as a little kid. She's like, Juliet, in that famous balcony scene, fun fact, there were no balconies back then. She was actually at a window, but somehow it's become to be known as the balcony scene. She's there and she's like, oh, what is a name? You know, it's not a face or a hand or an arm or a foot or any other man body part. <laughs> I'm just laughing so hard. There's so many sex jokes in there and it's hilarious and I'm kind of happy my 14 and 15 year olds don't catch on to all of them. Some of them they do. They get some of it but you know it's funny and I had never seen the 1968 Zeffirelli version of the play. Evidently it's really good <laughs> and it is and it was nominated for best picture at the Oscars, but lost to Oliver. But it's really good. Zeffirelli's a good director. Or was. So moving on from Romeo and Juliet, we get to inappropriate territory. First, I read from the mind of the genius who brought us kissing the coronavirus. I read, penetrated by the president's Twitter feed. It was funny. I loved it. It's this coder. She always has these like thirsty women in STEM, which I think is really good because we need more like pretty thirsty women in science, uh, technology, engineering, mechanics, because we don't get a lot of that. And we just don't get a lot of women in STEM. STEM's hard. But um, so I read that and it's about this coder who's really bored when she's having sex with her neighbor and she's scrolling through Twitter and she sees President Trump's, former President Trump's, um, Twitter feed and she's turned on by the power of the man tweeting about China. And so she's at her coding job and she turns this robot into the actual news feed and it's got like flashing, you know, on here where you see like the um, the letters, and you can tell this woman writer is not American because she describes foreskin. In America, about 60% of our men are circumcised. But then um, I went to another book by her called I Bleeping Hate Zoom Quizzes, which was just a bunch of really stupid poems in MJ Edwards' weird sexual style. I mean, talking about masturbating on Zoom and I don't know. It was cute. It was funny. <laughs> um, and then after that, I read The Barrio Kings. This is an easy reader I got from my classroom because I have a lot of English learners. And I read that one. And I liked it okay. I think they'll like it a lot more than I do. Um, it's about this, like, ex-gang member who turned around his life. His brother was murdered by... Um, a rival gang and um, he's trying to turn his life around because he and his girlfriend are having a baby but someone from his past is released from prison they want revenge and he has to make like the tough choice between keeping his promise to the girlfriend or avenging his brother's death so I think my kids will really like it um we haven't gotten to do much SSR time which stands for student selected reading where we just read for 25 minutes because we're swamped with Romeo and Juliet but moving on so the final book I read in October was the third book of The Wheel of Time, and it was The Dragon Reborn. Um, The Dragon Reborn wasn't really in this, but I mean, Perrin is such an amazing character. Perrin, Egwene, and Nynaeve. Right now, I think Nynaeve is my favorite character, the one who likes to tug on her braid. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about that one because... You know, it's the third in the series, and um, you really have to read. It took me until um, book two to really get into The Wheel of Time. That's The Great Hunt. That's where most people fall in love with the series, and that's where I fell in love with it. And it's just a continuation onto The Great Hunt. Um, so now moving on. Let My book of the month is here, and I should have three books. I can't, like, quite remember which ones I bought. <laughs> So we'll see. And Book of the Month is pretty awesome because you get these. I mean, it's only like $15 a month. And if you use like one of the BookTubers promo codes, it's only $10 for the first month. And 
I mean, these are adult hardback books. Book, some of them are wearing it, but, I mean, books are expensive, especially hardbacks, which I'm not, like, the biggest fan of, but, um, yeah, so, first one I got, The Family, it's a historical fiction, this is about Mafia, yeah, two daughters, two family, one escapable fate, all right, Sophia Columbia, some Italian-American last name, is a free spirit, loud and untamed. Antonio Russo is thoughtful, ever observing the world around her. Best friends since birth, they share everything from brick wall that divides their apartment to the shadows cast by their family's unspoken community, the family. Sunday dinners gather them to feast, discuss business, and renew intoxicating bond born of blood and love. But the disappearance of Antonio's father drives a whisper-thin wedge between the girls as they grow into women, wives, mothers, and leaders. Their hearts expand in tandem with Red Hook and Brooklyn around them, even as they push against society's expectations and fight to preserve their complex but life-sustaining fr friendship. One faithful night, their loyalty to each other and the family will be tested. Only one of them will pull the trigger before it's too late. So I think this has some kind of mafia connection. I think it takes place in like the 1950s. And it came in kind of damaged. It's got a bump. So there's that one. These are the two, by the way, Fountains of Silence, that I remembered I bought. So this is about the Spanish Civil War. And I'm reading this for Historicon because one of the prompts is a book you feel like you're the last to know about or that you're the last to read. This is all the way from 2019. And this is about the Spanish Civil War. They were fighting um, Franco, who was a fascist. And it was basically the dress rehearsal for World War II. And so many people don't know that the Spanish Civil War was, like, actually something that happened. But it was pretty bad. And a lot of people who weren't even Spanish, like, joined into it just to fight fascism. And this one came in a little messed up, too. So I might even do a reading vlog of this because... I was recently introduced to Rudis Sepetis because of my students. I read um, Between Shades of Grey um, because they were doing like something for an assignment, and I very much liked it. Okay, so this is the last one that I had forgotten about. I knew I ordered three. And this is also from 2019. These are both October of 2019. Fate of the Fallen. Fantasy read. I've been in a big fantasy mood. Not all stories have happy endings. Everyone loves Matthias. Naturally, when he discovers it's, a, it's his destiny to save the world, another chosen one trope, he dives in head first, pulling along his best friend, Oslo, along for the ride. The going gets rough, and folks start to believe their best chance for survival is to surrender to the forces of evil. Alright, it's a little thin. Wow, this is thin. Interesting. Normally family book. Like, this is really thin. Normally fantasy books are bigger. 344 pages. Huh. Interesting. I hope you... Alright, so book two is already... Oh, she's from Texas! Cal Cage, she's from Texas. Adjunct calls... Kel Kay lives in Texas and occasionally serves as an adjunct college faculty member. I wonder what college. Interesting. I'll have to look her up. Okay, so for sure on my TBR is Fountains of Silence. The other book that is for sure on my TBR is Salt of the Sea, also by Ruta Cepetis, um, because it fits another one of the prompts, which is like having to do with travel. Another book I might read is um, The Light Between Us, which is about lighthouse keepers. Um, so I have a lot of stuff sort of kind of planned, not really. I am much of a mood reader, but I do want to finish my 52 book challenge. So I know one of the books I'm going to read this month is Challenger Deep because it fits the prompt of the National Book Award winner. I'll put this back on my tiny, tiny shelf edit, put this back on my tiny shelf. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is NaNoWriMo. We're getting towards the end of this video. I'm going to try to finish my Civil War novel. It will not be easy. 
I'm only about 20,000 words through, and to finish, to win NaNoWriMo, meaning writing 50,000 words in one month, you have to write 16, 67, 1667, 1667 words in a day. I wrote 800 yesterday, and I've only written like 300 today. So I'm seriously going to have to make up on the weekend what I've been missing during weekdays because I come home and I'm exhausted. Um, but that just comes with the territory of being a high school teacher. So that's pretty much it for today. Little piece of <laughs> guinea pig pellet. Um, I know my November TBR wasn't like super clear, but that's because I don't really have that great of an idea what I'm reading besides the two Ruta Sepetis books. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. Keep reading, keep writing, keep loving words. I hope you love my tiny little bookshelves, and I will see you next time. Bye.